The Cube presents KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2022. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to Valencia, Spain. In KubeCon, CloudNativeCon Europe 2022, I'm Keith Townsend alongside Enrico yep. Signoretti, Senior IT Analyst for GigaOn. Welcome so, back to the show, Enrico. Thank you again for having me here. Uh, first impressions of QCon. Well, great show. As, uh, as I mentioned before, I think that we are really in this uh, very positive mood of talking with each other, and people wanting to see you know, the projects, people that build the projects, and it's amazing. I mean, a lot of interesting conversation in the show floor, and uh, in the various sessions, very positive mode. So this is going to be a fun one. We have some amazing builders on the show this week, and none other than William Morgan, <laughs> CEO of Buoyant. Uh, what's your role in the Linkerd project? So I was one of the original creators of Linkerd, but at this point I'm just the, the beautiful face of the project. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of beautiful face of the project, Linker D just graduated uh, uh, from as a CNCF project. Yeah, that's right. So uh, last year we, we became the first service mesh to graduate in the CNCF. Very proud of that. Um, and that's thanks, you know, largely to the incredible community around Linker D that is just excited about the project and you know wants to talk about it and wants to be involved. So let's talk about the significance of that. Linkerd, not the only service mesh yeah, project right. out there. Right. Talk to me about the level of effort to get it to the point that it's graduated. That's, you don't see too many projects graduate in CNCF in general, so let's talk about kind of the work needed to get Linkerd to this point. Yeah, so the, you know, the, the, the bar is high, and it's mostly a measure, not necessarily of like the, the project being technically good or bad or anything, but it's really a measure of maturity of the community around it. So is it being adopted by organizations that are really relying on it in a critical way? Is it you know, being adopted across industries? You know, is it having kind of a significant impact on the cloud native community? And so for us, you know, there was the, the work involved in that was really not any different from the work involved in, in kind of maintaining Linkerd and growing the community in the first place, which is you try and make it really useful you try and make it really easy to get started with, you try and be supportive and to you know, have a, a friendly and welcoming community. And if you do those things, then you, know, you kind of naturally get yourself to the point where uh, it's, a, it's a really strong community full of people who are excited about it. So from the point of view of you know, users adopting the, um, this technology, so we are talking about everybody, or do you see really you know, large organization, large uh, Kubernetes yeah. clusters in infrastructure adopting it. Right? Yeah, so that's the answer to that has changed a little bit over time, but uh, at this point, we see Linkerd adoption across industries, across verticals, and we see it from very small companies to very large ones. So, uh, you know, one of the talks I'm really excited about at this conference is from the folks at Xbox Cloud Gaming who talked about, who are going to talk about how they deployed Linkerd across, you know, 22,000 pods around the world to serve, you know, basically on-demand video games. Never a use case I would ever have imagined for Linkerd. And at the previous KubeCon, you know, virtually KubeCon EU, we had a whole keynote about how Linkerd was used to combat COVID-19. So all sorts of uses, and it really doesn't, you know, whether, whether it's a small cluster or a large cluster, it's, it's equally applicable. Wow, yes. so as we talk about Linkerd, service mesh, we obviously are going to talk about security, application right. control, et cetera. But in this climate, software supply chain is critical. And so right. we think about open source software supply yeah. chain. Talk to us about the recent security audit of Linkerd. Yeah, so one of the things that we do uh, as part of a CNCF project and also as part of, um, I, I think, our relationship with our community is we have regular security audits you know, where we, we engage uh, security professionals who are very thorough and you know, dig into all the details. Of course, the source code is all out there, you know, so anyone can read through the code, but they'll build threat model analyses and things like that, and then we take their, their report and we publish it. We say, hey look, here's, you know, here's the situation. So uh, we have earlier reports online, and this newest one uh, was done by a company called Trail of Bits, 
and they built a whole threat model and looked through all the different ways that Linkerd could go wrong, and they always find issues, of course, you know, it's, it, it would be very scary, I think, to get a report that was like, no, we didn't yeah, find, or, clean. you know, yeah, everything's fine, yeah. you know, <laughs> should be okay, I don't know, right? Um, but they, you know, they, they did not find anything critical, they found some issues that we rapidly addressed and then, you know, everything gets written up in the report and, and then we publish it, you know, as part of an open source artifact. Are you, let's say, you know, um, do they give you an ads up something so if something happens so that you can act on the code before you know somebody else discovers the Yeah, the yeah, they'll give you a preview of what they found and then often, you know, it's not like you're going before the judge and the judge makes a judgment and then like off to jail, right? It's it's a dialogue because they don't necessarily understand the project. Well, they definitely don't understand it as well as you do. So you are helping them you know, uh, understand which parts and, and your, uh, you know, are, are interesting to look at from the security perspective, which parts are not that interesting. They do their own investigation, of course, but it's a dialogue the entire time. So you do have an opportunity to say, oh, you told me that was a, a, a minor issue. I actually think that's larger or, or vice versa. You know, you, you think that's a big problem. Actually, we thought about that and it's not a big problem because of whatever. So it's a collaborative process. So Linkerd been around, like, when I first learned about Service Mesh, Linkerd was the project yeah. that I learned about. Yeah. Uh, it's been there for a long time, but just mentioned 22,000 clusters. That's just mind boggling. Pods, 22,000 pods. Pods, that's pods. Yeah. okay. Yeah. The, clusters would be great yeah, though. Yeah, <laughs> clusters would be great too, but it's still 22,000 yeah, pods. Deployment. That's the big deployment yeah. of Linkerd. Yeah. But all the way down to the small, smallest mm -hmm. uh, set of pods as well, what are some of the recent project updates, some of the learnings you bought back mm -hmm. from the community and yeah. updated the, the project as a result? Yeah, so a big one for us, you know, on the topic of security, Linkerd, a big driver of Linkerd adoption is security, and, and less on the supply chain side and more on the traffic, like live traffic security. So things like mutual TLS, so you can encrypt the communication between pods and make sure it's authenticated. One of the recent feature additions is uh, authorization policy, so you can lock down connections between services and you can say service A is only allowed to talk to service B and I want to do that not based on network identity, you know, not based on like IP addresses because those are spoofable and you know, we've kind of like as an industry moved, <laughs> moved, we've gotten a little more advanced from that but actually based on the workload identity, you know, as captured by the mutual TLS certificate exchange. So we give you the ability now to, um, to, to restrict the types of communication that are allowed to happen uh, on your cluster. So, okay, this is what happened. What about the future? Well, can you give us, you know, hints or suggestions on what is going to happen in the medium and long term? I think that? we're done, you know, we graduated, so we're just going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> what, what else is there to do? There's no grad school, you know. Uh, no, no, so for us, uh, there's a clear roadmap ahead, uh, continuing down the, the security uh, realm, for sure. We've given you kind of the very first building block, which is at the service level, but coming up in, in the 2.12 release, uh, we'll have route-based policy as well, so you can say this service is only allowed to call these three you know, routes on this endpoint. Um, and we'll be working later to uh, do things like mesh expansion, so we can run the data plane outside of Kubernetes. You know, so the control plane will stay in, in Kubernetes, but the data plane, will, you'll be able to run that on VMs and, and, and things like that. Uh, and then of course, in the, you know, we're also starting to look at things like, I like to make a fun of WASM a lot, but we are actually starting to look at WASM and, and the ways that that might actually be useful for Linkerd users. So we talk a lot about the flexibility of a project like Linkerd. You can do amazing things with it from a security perspective, but we're talking still to a uh, DevOps type crowd mm -hmm. of, of, of developers who are spread thin across their skill set. How do you help balance the need for the flexibility, which usually comes with more nerd knobs, and servicing uh, a crowd that wants even higher levels of abstraction and simplicity? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. And this is, this is what makes Linkerd so unique in the service mesh spaces. We have a laser focus on simplicity and especially on operational simplicity. So our audience, you know, we can make it easy to install Linkerd, but what we really care about is when you're running it and you're on call for it and it's sitting in this critical, vulnerable part of your infrastructure, do you feel confident in that? Do you feel like you understand it? Do you feel like you can observe it? Do you feel like you can predict what it's going to do? And so every aspect of Linkerd is designed to be as operationally simple 
as possible. So when we deliver features, you know, that's always our, our primary consideration is, you know, we, we have to reject the urge, you know, we have an urge as, as engineers to like want to build everything, you know, it's the ultimate platform to solve all problems and we have to really be disciplined and say, we're not going to do that. We're going to look at solving the minimum possible problem with a minimum set of features because we need to keep things simple and, and we need to look at the human aspect to that. And I think that's been a part of, of Linkerd's uh, success. And then on the Buoyant side, of course, you know, I, I don't just work on Linkerd, I also work on, on Buoyant, which helps organizations adopt Linkerd and, and increasingly large organizations that are not service mesh experts don't want to be service mesh experts. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they want to spend their time and energy developing their business, right, and, and building the business logic that powers their company. So for them, we have actually re recently introduced fully managed Linkerd, where we can take on, even though Linkerd has to run on your cluster, right, the, 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 the sidecar proxies have to be alongside your application, we can actually take on the operational burden of of upgrades and trust anchor rotation and installation, and you can effectively treat it as a utility, right? And, and, and have a, a hosted-like uh, experience, even though the, the actual bits, at least most of them, not all of them, most of them have to live on your cluster. I love the focus of most CNCF projects. You know, it's, uh, it's peanut butter or jelly, not peanut butter yeah. trying to be, become jelly. Right. Uh, right. What's the, what's the What's the peanut butter to Linker D's jelly? Like, where does yeah. Linker D stop and some of the things that customers should really consider yeah. when looking at service mesh? Yeah, no, that's a great way of looking at it. And I actually think that that philosophy comes from Kubernetes. I think Kubernetes itself, one of the reasons it was so successful is because it had some clearly delineated boundaries. It said, this is what we're going to do, right? And this is what we're not going to do. So we're going to do layer three, four networking, right? But we're going to stop there. We're not going to do anything with layer seven. And that allowed the service mesh. So I guess, if I were to go down, the, the bread, the bread of the sandwich is Kubernetes, <laughs> and then Linkerd is the, is the peanut butter, I guess. And then the jelly, you know, so I think the jelly is every other aspect of, of building a platform, right? So if you are, uh, the, the, the audience for Linkerd, most of the time is the platform owners, right? They're building a platform, an internal platform for their developers to write code. And so as part of that, of course, you've got Kubernetes, you've got Linkerd, but you've also got a CI, CD system. You've also got a, um, you know, a, a code repository, if that's GitLab or, or GitHub or wherever. You've got you know, other kind of tools that are enforcing various other constraints. All of that is the jelly you know, in the, this is analogy is getting complicated now, <laughs> in like the, the platform sandwich that, right. you know, that you're serving. <laughs> So talk to us about trends and service mesh from the, from the as we think of the macro. Yeah, yeah, so you know, it's been an interesting space because we were talking a little bit about, you know, about this before the show, but uh, the, there was so much buzz, you know, and then what we, what we saw was basically it took two years for that buzz to become actual adoption, you know, and now a lot of the buzz is off on other exciting things, and the people who remain in the Linkerd space are, are very focused on, uh, I actually have a, a real problem that I need to solve, and I need to solve it now. Um, so that's been great. So in terms of broader trends, you know, I think one thing we've seen for sure is the service mesh space is kind of notorious for complexity, you know, and a lot of what we've been doing on the Linkerd side has been trying to, to reverse that, that, uh, that idea, you know, because it doesn't actually have to be complex. There's interesting stuff you can do, especially when you get into the way we uh, handle the sidecar model. It's actually really, it's a wonderful model operationally. It's really, it feels weird at first, and then you're like, oh, actually this makes my operations a lot easier. So a lot of the trends uh, that I see, at least for Linkerd, is doubling down on the sidecar model, trying to make sidecars as small and as thin as possible, and try and make them you know, kind of transparent to the rest of the application. Uh, so. Well, William Morgan, one mm -hmm. of the coolest Twitter handles I've seen, at <laughs> WM on Twitter, that's actually a really cool Twitter handle. Thank you. CEO of Buoyant, thank you for joining theCUBE again, CUBE alum. Thanks From Valencia, me. Spain, I'm Keith Towns along with Enrico Signoretti, and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage.